Quick plug! My good friend Gus is still making these beautiful posters and people are sending me DMs of them framed up and they look beautiful. Another plug! Saxologic Sayo's mouthpiece is for sale. I have upgraded to the 8 tip opening. 7 still good, but I just prefer the 8. I think it's wider and it's uh, more free-blowing. That's what I like in a mouthpiece. Ligatures are still dope. If you buy it, you get this really cool design on the side. And on the other side, it says Saxologic X Sayo's. The reeds that I use are Boston Sax reeds, which are also in my description. So everything you play on your instrument is technically in your head. If you take just sound, like literally pretend that the human race just went extinct, but a small Amish family survived, and this Amish family knew nothing about music, and they found this inside of a cave somehow, perfectly preserved. If they put it in their mouth, it'd probably sound something like this. So how do we go from that into something like this? So the stuff doesn't just occur from a vacuum. At one point, it was one of the most significant innovations to discover the interval of a perfect fifth. Thank you, Pythagoras. Would the Amish people eventually find it again? Probably. But don't underestimate that it took human beings thousands of years to make sense of sound waves to this level that we have today. Now, that's not to say that music theory determines what sounds good. Music theory is just a means of identification. Usually things that sound good were at first found on accident, and then they put in their music over and over, and analysts observed the patterns and put a label on it. No one went up to Bird and Diz and said, hey, this is the rules and the music theory for bebop. Go! No, like Charlie said, he was just trying to find the pretty notes. So the point I'm trying to make is 90%, if not even more, of what you play is completely in your head. Technique is our vehicle used to drive, but ultimately what's in our head is the driver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to an Instagram video. I heard it like 10 minutes before this, and I have not tried to play it or transcribe it. on my Instagram feed by Adam Larson Jazz. He teaches at the UMKC Conservatory and he's just unbelievable. He has a ton of books out, he's a great teacher, and literally this was just an impulse decision. So he has no idea I'm even making this video. I don't even think he knows who I am. So the clip goes on longer than that. So those are over the changes of Cherokee by Ray Noble. But I'm gonna take just that first A section. And what I wanna do is prove my case that the music that we play in practice, really we're just training our mind. Our hand is just our car, the better your technique, the better your car, sure. But if you're a bad driver, then you're probably gonna crash the car. It doesn't really matter how good the car is. So I'm gonna take that first A section and I'm gonna transcribe it completely in my head first. Now I do have a baby form of perfect pitch, but it's a learned version called true pitch. I've made three videos on this now if you'd like to dive into that a little more. Now perfect pitch or true pitch doesn't give you perfect execution. It just allows you to identify exactly what a note is without the use of a reference. So I still have to do a lot of mental work in my head before I can play this on the saxophone. Now again, I promise I have not touched this solo. I have no interest in lying to you guys, and I'm not trying to sell anything. All I want to do is make a point that when you practice, your mind must be fully engaged. Brain dead repetitions do not do anything for you. Alright, now I'm trimming the parts that I didn't want. Save the video. Now I'm gonna use this app called video to mp 3 I heard you can't download this anymore. I don't know. If, if you can't, I'm sure there's other apps that can do this. You click it, you press plus, select your video, press done, find your video down here, click it. Click this symbol up on the top right, you're gonna click open in, you're gonna scroll to the right here, press more. You're gonna scroll down to any tune, which is another app you have to download. And voila. All right, so now that I have this app, what I'm going to do is pause and play to my own content till I feel ready to play this on the saxophone. And in the meantime, I'm not going to touch the saxophone. Okay, so I have no idea how long this is take. I'm going to start the timer now. I'll show you the first bit of process that I do, and then I'll speed it up. Okay, so here I go. Oh, wow. D, G, C, B. 
Oh, sorry. C or D G A B A G D. This is a lot more awkward than I thought. I, okay. Anyway, I'm gonna keep going. So that's an enclosure. Which fingering would be the easiest? That's palm key. Both of them are pretty easy. I'll do the I'll do the uh, fork fingerings. It sounds like that's what he's doing. <laughs> so from that G, he goes down completely chromatically. Nice. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, I think I got it. I think I finally got it. So I'm going to go slow at a tempo that I feel like I can really do this. Mm. I'll go really slow. That was actually a lot more scarier than I thought. I did not want to waste all that time to make a mistake. So there we go. The driver is 90% of the work, but what about the other 10%? Let's go ahead and drill this sucker. This video was entertaining and I hope you learned at least something. I definitely learn about this stuff every day. All right, thank you for 89.8 thousand subscribers. Oh my god, oh my god. Have a good day.